Hello everyone. This video is actually going to be about a simple tutorial for using Colorbrewer2.org. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what exactly is Colorbrewer? I've never heard of this. Well, this website basically allows you to uh, get a visual idea of what sort of color schemes may be appropriate for representing your data. And here we have the simple user interface. Here at the very top, we have number of data classes which project uh, how many features that you want to show to your audience. It's also shown right here. If I go on, if I click the drop down arrow and choose say six, it's instantly updated on the map, and you can see that the multi-hue color scheme has also changed as well to incorporate the new data. Now, there are three types of data natures for this uh, this website and that is sequential, diverging, and qualitative. Sequential data, you can think of sequential data as mostly used for like say population uh, total amounts, like the darker areas would represent higher numbers than the brighter than the lighter areas which represent lower numbers. You can also pick between two different color schemes such as multi-hue or having one sole color for single hue. Diverging uh, natures typically are used if you have like a percentage change in your data Say for instance the uh, say for instance the first color scheme the dark green area could could represent um, a negative decrease uh, in population as opposed to the uh, uh, brown numbers which represent a higher number. And finally, we have qualitative, which you can probably use this uh, color scheme for say like unique categories, like for say for instance uh, denominations. Uh, say for instance like purple could represent uh, denomination number one, whereas yellow could represent denomination number two, and so on. Colorbrewer also includes uh, a few special categories to help uh, find a particular uh, color scheme that is printer friendly. It could be photocopy safe, colorblind safe, um, and these are actually right here in the category. As you can see, qualitative does not very do well for a couple of these categories. Um, they're also displayed just to the right of the uh, of the the check mark list, and below that list is actually the census, which allows you to input basic roads and city icons on the map, just to give you uh, a better idea to see if the default black or red uh, black text or red roads uh, is suitable for your map. You can also turn on and off the borders, and you can also add a background a custom background color, which I'll. As you can see, there are a lot of different colors that you can choose from. Uh, I, I think for the time being, I'll just I'll scroll through it just so you can see that, um, just so you can see the uh, the cool effect that it does. And uh, for now, though, I'll I'll think I'll keep a light gray color for this background. And uh, the next option, actually, you can actually add a terrain, uh, which will actually add in a basic raster data. Oh yeah, something I forgot to mention: um, if you move your cursor over any one of the uh, the county parcels on the example map, it will actually show you uh, the color uh, the color scheme for hex, RGB, and CMYK, which I will talk about in just a bit. Uh, again, these little icons here show you whether or not if your selected color scheme is printer friendly, colorblind safe, etc. The only exception being is that little laptop icon, which actually represents a uh, liquid crystal display or LCD. Uh, nowadays, most computer screens are actually are comprised of LCD, uh, and as such, uh, they should really should not have a problem uh, viewing this on the said screen. Uh, there are three primary color options, hex, RGB, and CMYK. Now, hex colors are in HTML format. Uh, they're typically used for when browsing the web. RGB is, uh, is your typical uh, computer color band system, which mixes uh, colors from from values of 0 to 255, 0 being dark, 255 being bright, and CMYK color schemes are actually your printer inks of when your printer inks have to mix in order to match the colors. Anyways, this concludes the color tutorial. Thank you for watching.